Hello everybody, I am Jarrett Ross, the Genie Vlogger, and I am here today with Randy Schoenberg. He is an attorney who has worked in getting back the stolen art from the Holocaust. He has um, had a movie about him, which is called The Woman in Gold, so you may have uh, seen that movie, which is very interesting. If you have not seen it, definitely check it out. But most importantly for us, he is a genealogist who has worked a lot in um, the genealogy field, and one of the things that we're going to talk about today is a wonderful uh, piece of software called Genie.com. Great. So I'm very happy to talk about Genie. I, I, I discovered it in 2008 when I went to one of these conferences that we're at now, the the IAJGS Jewish Genealogy Conference. So uh, it's been a, been a while, but I'm totally addicted to it. So uh, let's let's go. Let's yeah. talk about Genie. Yeah. So one of the things that's really wonderful about Genie is the fact that it's considered the world tree. Can you tell us a little bit about why it's considered the world tree? Yeah, so Genie, uh, a lot of genealogy companies like uh, Ancestry and MyHeritage and Genie, they all started around the same time, but Genie had a different model. Their idea was rather than have everybody build his or her own separate tree, uh, why shouldn't everybody work on what they call the family tree of the entire world, the global family tree? And, uh, or world family tree. And so the concept was if you're building your tree and you suddenly overlap with something someone else has done, right? So you just merge them together and then the two puzzles sort of piece together and all of a sudden you have a larger puzzle. So very quickly, they, were, they started with you know, thousands and tens of thousands of little trees and they started to link them together and all of a sudden they had what they called the big tree, right? So imagine, everything's starting to combine and, and there's one center. It's just like when you're doing a jigsaw puzzle at home, right? You start at these little, everything's all separate pieces and then all of a sudden there's this big glob in the middle. That's what the big tree is. And then the big tree has grown to 115 million profiles. That's each profile is a, is a unique person uh, or should be. And if we have duplicates, we merge them together and the tree just gets more interconnected and more complete. And uh, it's, a, it's a project that's ongoing. There are four million users of Genie who are connected to the world family tree. So it's really a unique uh, and giant family tree and growing every day. Yeah. And you act as a curator for Genie. Right, after a few years, they decided that they needed volunteer help to, uh, to clean up areas where there were problems and help new users figure out how to use the program. And so they established a curator program and I'm, I'm one of the uh, volunteer curators. I think there are over 200 of us. And uh, we one of my fellow curators calls us park rangers. We go around <laughs> sort of seeing how everybody's picnic is going and cleaning up if there's a mess. And uh, it works works pretty well. Wikipedia works the same way. They're, they're sort of super users on, and curators on Wikipedia. and. We can lock things down if there are problem issues and, uh, and help people resolve uh, areas of disagreement. And so it, it, it works very, very well. And so we have all these volunteers all over the world in you know, Estonia and Norway and China and Australia and, of course, in the United States uh, and South America and Africa, wherever there are people using Genie, which is everywhere, we'll find curators working in those areas and helping people out. Very cool. So one of the uh, new features about Genie that I'm really excited to be trying out is called Smart Copy. And um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, sure. There's a curator, Jeff Gentis, who uh, is a programmer also, uh, as many of them are. And he developed a Google Chrome app. It actually, I think, works on, on some other browsers now, too. But it was uh, initially designed to work with Google Chrome as an application that you can install that sort of operates on top of Genie using what's called an API, sort of a, it's a gated entry into Genie's database that, that this app can call. And uh, what it allows you to do is copy from other resources, like uh, if you have a tree on MyHeritage or Ancestry or uh, FamilySearch or even from Find a Grave, various, I think there are about 12 or 13 different sources, uh, it will compare what we have on Genie with the other source, and if there's anything missing on Genie, it'll offer you the chance to sort of move it over onto Genie. So it's a great way of importing to Genie. Um, I have to say, initially, Genie allowed what's called a GEDCOM import. GEDCOM is a standardized file for storing genealogical information. It allowed people to just import. When I joined Genie, I imported 54,000 profiles that I had amassed that other people had put together with me. And, uh, but they stopped doing that because it caused too much duplication, um, not so much in Jewish genealogy, but in 
uh, non-Jewish genealogy, the goal in European genealogy is to link to Charlemagne, right? So everybody in the world has these giant trees that go back to Charlemagne, and they were constantly uploading the same repeated information that needed to be merged together. So Jeannie had to get rid of uh, GEDCOM uploads, which means that most of the data entry is now done by hand, uh, or using now this smart copy tool, which is available for, for pro users. There's a project on Genie. Uh, if you haven't discovered Genie projects, they're uh, another unique and very valuable resource, a way of organizing and uh, teaching people about Genie. So go to research projects and search for smart copy, and you can request that a curator authorize you to use co uh, smart copy. And it's a terrific tool. I, I really recommend it. It also has a consistency checker now, so it'll tell you if there are problems in your tree. It'll correct. Uh, sometimes people have capitalization issues and spaces and things like that. It's it's a remarkable program, and it's it's not even part of the Genie company. It's something that someone else devised to work with Genie. So it's it's really it's one of the best things ever, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really exciting. I've gotten to try it just a, a little bit at the uh, Genie booth at the uh, exhibit hall, and it's been really easy. Streamlines everything. Yeah. It's very nice. One of the things that you kind of just talked about was Genie projects, which I personally enjoy a lot. I have multiple Genie projects, uh, one for the Alliance Colony. I have one for the uh, Sephardic tree, which is to help clean that up. And I have a couple of other ones as well. Um, can you tell us a bit about your experience with the projects and the benefits that right. you get from that? Projects are, it's, it's sometimes hard to describe to people, but it's sort of like a Wikipedia, again, uh, concept where anybody can create a project. It takes literally five seconds. You, you give it a title and you click create and there's a new project on Genie. And then you can edit the project description, you can attach photographs and documents, you can start discussions on the project, and most importantly, you can attach Genie profiles, public profiles, to the project. So uh, the classic example is the Titanic, right? There are a thousand people who died on the Titanic, we have all the lists, okay, where are they on the world family tree, right? So people find them and attach them to the project because they all have that one unfortunate thing in common. Uh, sometimes, though, the, they'll be more genealogically relevant projects. <laughs> I do a lot of town projects, so when I find uh, an ancestral town that I'm interested in, I create a project for that town, and I start finding every profile on Genie that's from that town and attaching it to the project and inviting the, the managers, the people who added those profiles, to collaborate on the project. And then together, we can list all the resources that are available and we can work together to piece together everybody in this, in this small village. Uh, it works amazingly well. If you're going through vital records, you end up being able to hook together everybody in the town because, of course, after hundreds of years living together, they're all related. They all have basically the same ancestors. If we could go back another 300 years, they're all really cousins, but they have different surnames now. And But you, you see how everybody is basically related to everybody else. And using the town project, uh, it, it makes it much easier. Uh, I'll explain that also. When, you're, when you get to, let's say, a marriage record for someone in your family, let's say your family name is Taylor, and they marry a Jones, right? And you say, Jones, I know there are jo other Joneses in this town. How do I find them, right? You go back to the town project, and you look for the Joneses that you've added already to the town project, and then you see how this new Jones fits in with those and connects to those, and that, now you have this larger Taylor Jones tree. And, uh, and so that it just works uh, incredibly well as a way of organizing uh, the resources on Genie and the profiles on Genie, and also uh, tying together people who have some sort of common thread that will help other all genealogists basically discover these families. So uh, anyway, use projects, look for projects on Genie. One big project that I set up is called the Jewish Genealogy Portal. If you're interested in Jewish genealogy, you should definitely look for that because that's what we call an umbrella project. It lists all of the other projects that are related to Jewish genealogy. Uh, so from that, for example, you'll find a Holocaust project. And at the Holocaust project, you'll find projects for each of the various extermination camps and, and uh, transport camps and, and things like that. So. Uh, it's 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 a, a really good tool. I don't think it exists on any of the other genealogy platforms, and I recommend it to people. Yeah, from my from my own personal experience, creating these projects has allowed me to collaborate with people that I wouldn't have been able to collaborate with otherwise, and has allowed me to find documentation such as handwritten uh, manuscripts and memoirs about family, yeah. and that is some of the best documentation. It, it, it's a new tool, and it it works. It definitely works. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
So, other questions about Jeannie? I could talk about Jeannie forever. Yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm an addict, <laughs> like, like so many of us. I have to say, there are a lot of people um, who use other platforms for building family trees, whether it's a desktop platform, uh, like a family tree maker or reunion, which I used to use. Uh, some people use online platforms like, like uh, Ancestry, which is very popular in the United States, or MyHeritage, which is very popular in Europe. Um, I find, I use all of these actually, all the time. I use uh, Ancestry, I use MyHeritage, I use FamilySearch um, all the time for research. I think they're terrific as data aggregators, but for tree building, Genie is really the best company for that. And it, 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 it really focuses only on tree building and not on data aggregation. Uh, because it's also a company that's now owned since 2012 by MyHeritage, you have links to all of the data that MyHeritage collects. But if you're interested in tree building, even if you do your research like I do often on Ancestry, uh, I build trees on only on Genie because it's, uh, it, I, I've tried it at the other platforms and they just don't work the same way that Genie does. You, you can't imagine how much you benefit from collaborating on Genie until, until you try it. So I really recommend everybody go to Genie and, and try it out. So one of, the, uh, one of the biggest negatives that people talk about with Genie is the fact that there are mistakes on the tree, which you do find in other trees, but what about Genie is different with the mistakes than on these other trees? Yeah, it's, I find it's, it's a paradox uh, that, that a lot of people in the genealogy community will say, oh, I looked at Genie and there was a mistake on the tree and that's terrible. Um, and it's, it's a real paradox. It's because you actually find the mistakes on Genie uh, that, that Genie actually has become the most accurate and complete tree that you can find anywhere. Uh, and so I hear from people say, oh, I found a mistake on Genie. And it's like, I know. We all find <laughs> mistakes on Genie, and we correct them. It's the only place where you can actually correct someone else's mistake. So it's not out there uh, sort of polluting the genealogical pool. A everywhere you look on Ancestry and MyHeritage, where they have dozens and dozens of, of overlapping trees, you'll find mistakes. A uh, perfect example, if you look on MyHeritage, and I'm sure uh, it's pro probably on Ancestry too, uh, you'll find my dad dead. Now my dad, thank goodness, is still alive, uh, but he has, uh, there's a guy with the same name who's born the same year in California, and unfortunately he passed away a few years ago. So someone had the bright idea, based on some matching technology that he was dead, that then propagated to all these other duplicate copies of my dad. Uh, on Genie, I know that's wrong. I talked yeah. to him the other day, right? <laughs> so so he's, uh, he's alive, right? Because I'm able to go in and correct that. Um, you, if you have problems like that, also curators like me and, or the other 200 curators can lock things down and make sure that, that uh, problems like that don't occur. I had another example of that just yeah. this week showing how someone was my 10th cousin and going up the path, I saw that, uh, that this ancestor of mine, it said she was born in Dusseldorf. I said, I don't think that's right, how'd that happen? So I looked at it and, uh, you know, this is nine, 10 generations back, so a lot of people interested in these historic profiles. And someone had added that she was born in Dusseldorf. And the reason she did was, if you look on my heritage, there are eight trees and six of them say she's born in Dusseldorf. So I looked at it a little more closely and realized I had actually already put on the profile that uh, there's a very reliable source, a very wonderful uh, book on tombstone inscriptions in Vienna that says that she might be the, the, the daughter of this man from Dusseldorf. Uh, and then what the rest of the world didn't know is that five years later, there's a journal article where the same author said, now I've read something else that suggests she isn't the daughter of this person from Dusseldorf, but rather this Salman Austerlitz from probably from Prague. And, uh, and then I found that article that he was relying on, and that's all linked on her page. So I went in, I corrected it, I locked the profile. That won't happen again on Genie. There's just one of her on Genie, and it's correct. Uh, you'll still find all the incorrect ones all over the place on Ancestry and MyHeritage. Uh, that's how Genie works. The, the people who care the most, are, we're all on Genie. We're working every day to make sure our trees are sourced and accurate and, uh, and locked down if, uh, if there are any issues. So it actually, even though some people will say they found mistakes on Genie, um, sure, 115 million profiles, even if we're 99% accurate, that's over a million mistakes. Uh, you'll find mistakes on Genie just like you'll find mistakes on your own tree if you, if you take a look at it. Uh, but, uh, but they get fixed on Genie. And, uh, and it's the fact that we have 4 million users, 8 million eyes scouring the tree all the time. Uh, we find the mistakes, we fix them, and that's why the Genie tree is the most accurate tree uh, that you'll find anywhere.
Yeah, one, of, one of the things that I do enjoy about Genie is that when you have a historical profile or you have a celebrity or something, you can create what's called a master profile. Right, right. Uh, because uh, it's especially useful for living people on, on Genie, as on most uh, of these programs, there's a privacy level, right, so that living people aren't uh, searchable as, as easily. And uh, we have the ability to make living people uh, into master profiles. If you're a curator, you can do that. So for famous people, uh, whether it's Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump, right, you'll be able to see their genealogies on Genie, even though they're alive because they're master profiles. Uh, we do that also with, with profiles that need to be locked down. Uh, historical profiles very frequently are, are turned into master profiles so that people know that this has been sourced and researched and sort of verified. Uh, by the curator. So it's, it's just yet another tool for building the most accurate world family tree uh, in existence. I've blogged about it. If people want to yeah. look on, on my blog, which is schoenblog.com. Uh, which will be linked below. You'll, you'll, uh, you'll see uh, several articles I've written, uh, some of them very pro-Genie, other, others saying what still needs to be improved on Genie because, listen, you know, we, we all want things to get better and there's always room for improvement. But, uh, but for my, for my uh, time, and, uh, and I, I spend a lot of it on genealogy, uh, Genie is where I, where I spend my time building trees. And like I said, I use all of the different platforms, uh, Ancestry, MyHeritage, FamilySearch, uh, and Reunion, et cetera. Uh, but for tree building, Genie is the place to go. So if you haven't explored it yet, go on, just start building your tree. Sooner or later, usually very soon, you'll get a little blue match and you can join the world family tree. Uh, if you haven't been on for a while, take another look. Genie's made a lot of improvements yeah. over the years. And so if you were the type that were really into genealogy and you looked at Genie in 2008 and nine and you didn't see what you were finding and you never came back, uh, come on back. It's a different world on Genie. You're gonna find a lot more information. So uh, th thanks for the opportunity to talk about yeah. Genie. I'm just a volunteer. Sure. I don't own the company, I wish I did. I uh, wish I ran it, but I don't. I'm just a volunteer and a, and a heavy user, and I'm very happy to, to tell people about it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for uh, being with us, Randy. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. If you do enjoy this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want to check out any of the links that were talked about in this, we're going to be posting them down below. Uh, you can also click right about here if you'd like to subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, at Genie Vlogger. And uh, where can they follow you at? If I, on Twitter, I'm at Randy Schoenberg, and uh, find me at the Jewish Genealogy Portal on Facebook. That's a, a group of 23,000 people that are interested in Jewish genealogy that, that I'm the administrator for, and uh, you can find me there every day. Cool. Well, that's it for today. We hope that you guys see some more videos. I am the Genie Vlogger. I'm out. <laughs>